Well, hello there. This is Ephemeral Rift's voice. I hope you are doing very well. Or this. This is just a blouse I borrowed from my girlfriend's wardrobe. It has a neck in the shape of a V. So I thought it was the most apt article of clothing. Alright, I can't, I can't continue that accent, Fred. I don't know how you do that so well. Maybe it's because you live there. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> this book is almost due back. just so packed full of really cool information, so I just wanted to give it, take another whack at it. And there was um, something about Shakespeare, something about Columbus, something about, oh, here we are, Napoleon, and uh, just some general interesting perspectives about history. So... We have the lost colony of Roanoke. I think this is very, very an exciting part of history. And we have another adventure in the new world. So I'm going to read this and then perhaps get to Roanoke. There's just so, so, so many different bits of this book. I really didn't know which, which way to go. So, I think this is the most interesting one. At a glance. In 1587, a colony of 100 and 23 English men, women, and children was founded on Roanoke Island right there in uh, Virginia and three years later their set settlement had disappeared without a trace so we're uncovering a conspiracy that killed the first English settlers in America the lost colony of Roanoke now, one historian believes that they were the victims of an English court conspiracy led by one of the most powerful men of that time. The sad, the sad, the sad account of an English seafarer and artist, John White, is the primary source for piecing together the events that doomed the colony of Roanoke. White was the governor of the first English colony in America, which, uh, which was established on Roanoke Island. It was to be named Raleigh, after the expedition's sponsor, Sir Walter Raleigh. A favorite of England's Queen Elizabeth I, Raleigh expected to make his fortune from the colony. He had already invested around 50,000 pounds, sending 18 ships to America to find a suitable location. But he was to finish up destitute, imprisoned, and finally executed. John White's account of the 1587 voyage to Roanoke and the subsequent disappearance 
of 115 men, women, and children. On the face of it, a plain narrative of a failed expedition. Now, scholars are arguing that a closer reading of the text divulges secret ambitions and evidence of sinister schemes that culminated in tragedy. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. For White, the tragedy was a personal one. He sailed back to England, leaving his daughter and newborn granddaughter with the rest of the settlers on the tiny island, but it was to be three years before he could return. The threat of a Spanish invasion kept English ships in port, trapping White on the wrong side of the Atlantic until finally in 1590. Raleigh persuaded Queen Elizabeth to allow his relief ships to set sail across the Atlantic. As White really reached the treacherous shallows that guarded the Roanoke Island, he may have hoped for a happy reunion, but could hardly have failed to harbor misgivings about the fate of the vulnerable settlers. He knew the local warriors to be hostile, the week before he left, one colonist had even been shot dead. Shot dead by an arrow. And White, of course, found the settlement deserted. The single clue to the settler's fate was a lone word carved into a wooden stake. Croatoan. Croatoan. So over here, so over here we have charting a disaster. The man-made governor of Roanoke was the artist John White. He had mapped the coastline on an earlier expedition, indicating Roanoke Island and Croatoan both circled. Chesapeake Bay is at the top of the chart. So I guess that's... An enduring mystery, Roanoke was meant to be the first permanent English colony in America 33 years before the Pilgrim Fathers set foot in the New World. Yet the colonists disappeared and were never seen by Europeans again. Now historians argue that they may have been pawns sacrificed as part of an English conspiracy that permeated the high echelon of power in England. Throughout the 16th century, the 1500s, the thought of conquering North America captivated English traders and adventurers. They were lured by the prospect of mineral riches and the lucrative returns from privateering, stage-sanctioned Privateering was, in 1580, accounted for 20% of English imports. An American settlement also had the potential, should an inland passage to the Pacific be found, of becoming the great mercantile gateway out west to the Orient, Asia. Raleigh had won from the Queen the patent to 8.5, 8.5 million acres of American land. But he was undecided about which land to choose. Which to choose. One explorer, Captain Arthur Barlow, had written of Roanoke that it was plentiful, sweet, and fruitful and bringeth forth all the things in abundance, without toil or labor. But Raleigh's first attempt to set a colony on Roanoke had actually failed, with the settlers giving up after just ten months. They fell out with the local Sakotoan tribe, Sakotan tribe, and burned one of their villages after a quarrel over a stolen silver cup. And in retaliation, the Native Americans 
withdrew food supplies, forcing the settlers to hunt for crabs. Raleigh and his backers decided to move the settlement some 50 miles north to a sheltered deep water port of the Chesapeake Bay. Away, 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 very far away from the hostile neighbors. A small garrison remained at Roanoke to guard the old site, but the island was deemed too risky for civilians, unless, of course, the Secotan tribe were brought under control. And John White, the prospective governor, was charged by Raleigh to recruit 150 colonists, each of whom would receive 500 acres of farmland. And time was pressing. If the colonists were to reach Chesapeake for the planting season, under the strength with only 115 recruits, the ships set sail at the end of April 1587, nearly a hundred years after Columbus had landed in the Caribbean. White's account of the voyage shows that they were immediately beset by puzzling difficulties. It is clear that, in White's opinion, these all stem. Fernandez was a former pirate. His navigational skills and knowledge of the eastern seaboard of America were undoubted. There was even a stretch of coastline named after him. Let's see, can we see it here? Can we see it? Maybe not. Okay. His judgment was less assured. White wrote in his diary about Fernandez lewdly that is, deliberately, abandoned the flyboat that carried shore stores for the settlement as it foundered in the water of Portugal. In the Caribbean, White recorded the crew failed to take on necessary supplies of water and salt because of Fernandez's obstruction. The expedition made slow progress, and in mid-July, ships were brought to a complete halt for several days off the coast of Carolina, and uh, despite his familiarity with the area, Fernandez attempted to get his bearings. Get his bearings. White wrote that such was Fernandez. His uh, carelessness and ignorance that he nearly ran the boat aground on the Cape of Fear. These delays had desperate consequences for the settlers. They had reached land too late to plant the grain, and while the failure to stock up on food meant that supplies were running low. Worse was to come, Raleigh had uh, instructed White to go ashore at Roanoke for a conference concerning the state of the country, with the small garrison of men left there from the 1585 trip. But as White and 40 of his men were being rowed ashore, one of Fernandez's deputies shouted that they would not be let back on board. The ship would only stay at Roanoke long enough for all the settlers to be ferried ashore. And White was dumbfounded. His pilot had overruled the orders of Sir Walter Raleigh himself. Fernandez refused to take the colonists any further. He said he was too pressed for time. They were to be marooned with insufficient supplies and unseasonal. inhabitants near the original Roanoke settlement was the village of Pomioke 
Ohmio, populated by the Sakotan Indians. At first, relations were good, and there was trading between the two groups, but the peaceful accord was short. Potato was not introduced to Europe by Walter Raleigh. It grew only in South America at that time. So Raleigh would not have found it growing in Virginia. So alone and with their only source of advice, support, and protection, the garrison at Roanoke the settlers' next discovery was a chilling one. All that remained of the 15 soldiers that were previously there were bleached skeletons. The Secotan had exacted a terrible revenge. Exacted a terrible revenge for their destroyed village. And the colony's salvation appeared only with the late arrival of their next flyboat carrying surplus provisions. The settlers decided to send White back to England on the ship to seek assistance for their predicament. Now Fernandez's ship's log, meanwhile, shows that he idled on the American coastline for 36 days, easily enough time to take the colonists to Chesapeake. Why did Fernandez, an investor in the expedition, choose to abandon the colonists? The answer appears to lay across the Atlantic, the Atlantic Ocean. At the court of Queen Elizabeth the I. Court intrigue. Court intrigue. Among all of the noblemen jostling for position at favor in favor at court sir walter raleigh stood out he was only a courtier but possessed the wardrobe and demeanor of a prince and was a particular favorite of the queen the darling of the english cleopatra as one flemish visitor put to the court there's as deadly enemies there were there was a great rivalry between Sir Walter Raleigh and Sir Francis Walsingham left at the court of Elizabeth I. Walsingham was notorious for his underhand methods. A writer of the time reckoned that he could overthrow any matter by undertaking it and moving it so as it must fall. Oh, on foreign policy, his buccaneering style often held sway with her, Raleigh's, overruling her more cautious advisors, such as the Secretary of State, Sir Francis Walsingham. Raleigh was well rewarded for his loyalty to Elizabeth. Following the execution of Anthony Babington, who had plotted to assassinate the Queen, Raleigh was given Babington's sizable estates, and Raleigh's power and influence ensured that he was a target for others with ambition. <laughs> Pencils going everywhere. Few men had the power to organize Raleigh's downfall. But one certainly did, Sir Francis Walsingham. Sir Francis Walsingham. Hello there. <laughs> and, uh, had both motive and means. He was uh, he was facing financial ruin. One, 
and as the mastermind behind the exposure of the Babington conspiracy, had expected to be rewarded with the estates that were in fact given to Raleigh. Walsingham knew that the Roanoke settlement was Raleigh's long-held dream in his weakest spot. Its failure would lead to his ruination. An American historian, Lee Miller, has argued that the loss of the colonists stems from Walsingham's plot to bankrupt Raleigh and take the land titles for himself. And Miller found evidence of a vital connection between Walsingham and Fernandez. So the Portuguese pirate Fernandez should have gone to the gallows, but Walsingham signed papers that released him. Could Fernandez have repaid this debt by sabotaging the Roanoke colony in order to ruin Raleigh? John White's diary certainly suggests dark purposes at work. He wrote how he, some, how he told some of the colonists that some enemies to him would not spare to slander him, saying he went to Virginia but polite likely. Oh, but politically. That's an interesting spelling of that. To lead so many into a country and there to leave them behind. He could, of course, have been referring to rival entrepreneurs aiming to discredit Raleigh and set up their own. legal right to the title of the land was in jeopardy. It depended on having settled a permanent colony with seven years, within seven years, as the former favorite descendant, as the former favorite descended into ruin and disgrace, Walsingham's old allies, Robert de Verrue, Earl of Essex, and Robert Cecil, eyed up his assets. Following the death of Elizabeth I, the new king, James I, was soon convinced of Raleigh's disloyalty. He, uh, he was tried for treason and imprisoned in the Tower of London in 1606. Soon after, his land title was won by Robert Cecil, along with these two men, responsible for the charges against K. 
against him. The Attorney General Sir Edward Coke and Chief Justice Popham. So, epilogue to the mystery. It was reported that in 1608, the chief of the Powhatan tribe had told settlers in Jamestown, Virginia, that the Roanoke survivors had been slaughtered. Historians now suspect this was a trumped-up charge against the Powhatan to justify violence. Then in 1701, the English surveyor John Lawson wrote of an unusual group of light-skinned American Indians he had met on the dunes of Croatoan. The dunes of Croatoan Island. As far as he could comprehend, several of their ancestors were white and could talk in a book, as we do. Could the settlers have survived to be the first European colonists in America after all? That mystery is one that may, may never be solved. The Roanoke settlers may have been massacred by the American Indians, or they may have integrated into one of the tribes that John White painted a decade before their disappearance. So now that I know you like history and the mythology that goes along with